If you are interning at a club at the moment, make sure that is your number one priority. Make everyone's lives easier for those that you're assisting, whether it be the high performance manager, the sports scientist, the rehab coach, the strength coach, make all their lives easier by helping out uh, and build trust and respect with that team and make sure you, you give that internship opportunity everything you've got. No, not only will you gain great experiences by doing that, you'll build great relationships, but it'll also pay dividends later on. It might not be at that club, um, but it might be when you go for a role at a future uh, opportunity and they contact someone from that club and they, they say all the good things about you. So um, networking is really, really important um, and there is definitely a right and wrong way to network and that is the right way just by doing great work uh, and letting the rest take care of itself. I didn't go the PhD route, but that would be if you're looking at the fastest way, you're doing your Bachelor of Sports Science now, you're, doing, you've done, you're about to finish your Masters, and you're like, all right, I need to get full-time experience, I want to get it now, uh, I would look at look into opportunities to, to embed yourself at a club and by, by completing your PhD. The other opportunity, which is the road that I took, is spending about four years at semi-professional level until you reach a point where you're now managing a program, whether it be MBL, um, Div 1, Soccer, uh, sorry, MBL 1, which is the level below, or um, Div 1 uh, Premier Soccer League. It might be a VAFA League. It might be um, any any of those. Uh, NAB League would be obviously a great opportunity. Any of those where you can work your way up to being a high performance manager at a state league level, including VFL, um, and you want to, that typically will take you about four years of experience. So you might have a couple of years working with the development athletes, then a year or two assisting the HBM as a 2IC where you're leading typically the strength program. You might be helping out with the medical team with rehabilitation. And then on the fourth year, you're now running the program. Once you're running that program at semi professional level, you're now uh, in the mix to a apply for those full-time contracts which will typically involve managing an aflw program what academic qualifications had you completed in your first full-time contract so options are bachelor of sports science human movement masters of sports science human movement phd or other um so yeah i know there would have been a long time ago um coaches out there may have been qualified with cert three and four um, but nowadays, you, you're going to have to have your bachelor's of sports science as a minimum to get it to get a contract. Then from there, with what you now know, what would your advice be to yourself starting out in a career in high performance sport? Uh, so, like I said to you guys earlier, my answer with that would be gaining more experience with injured athletes. I had great experience um, looking back at uh, working one on one in personal training. I did that for six years, running my own business. Uh, as well as working in different um, environments, so cross-training gym, boxing, um, swim teaching. So good to be able to be able to facilitate different types of sessions. Then working at community level sports, so managing a larger group, designing conditioning plans, um, and working with the coaches to design training um, sessions. Um, then when you go into VFL level, then I was building my experiences in the weights room with strength more specifically and power development. Um, we built a power club where guys in the off-season, if they wanted to come in and learn plyometrics and Olympic weightlifting, then I, I took them through that. 